my pleasure. And my, my personal belief is when you're asked to speak somewhere, it's, it's a call and it's a, it's a synchronicity thing. So I feel like I'm meant to be here. And the name of your organization is just so perfectly suited for our topic for the day, which is be better. And I know as leaders, we are pretty conscious. If you're a conscientious leader and you have about always striving to be better. And I think getting to know yourself accepting yourself and all your quirkiness, (laughs) strengths, opportunities. That's the number one place to start. One of the things I love about the Enneagram is that it gets to your motivations. Like I always joke, you can't make the Enneagram a party game. Like, oh, I think you're a this type because that's the behavior, but all behavior comes from inner motivations. And that's the beauty of the Enneagram. It makes you get in touch with something a little bit deeper than your actions. And I think in our world, we can get pretty superficial and make it about actions, but it's about what motivates those actions that makes us who we are. And when we can be in touch with that, we can notice triggers like, ah, there's that coming up again. It's not about what's happening. It's about this, this motivation and inner fear I have. My request for you today is that you jump in with questions with your aha moments, like, oh my gosh, Sally, you know, that is, so I'm throwing my pen. That is so me. That is a hundred percent me. Or, you know, I'm just really not seeing this. I thought I was this type and I may not be after all. I will offer that coming, like really homing in on your type can be hard. So when I studied the Enneagram in grad school, we studied for a full semester. I've also been certified in it. And I, in fact, recently I was in a new certification class. I was with people who coach in the Enneagram. And they were still like, wait, I think I may not be the type seven I thought I was all this time. I'm like, I've got an identity crisis. So the key about the Enneagram is we all carry all nine types within us. You're going to have a primary type. And if that's a little fuzzy, that's okay. I promise you, it doesn't mean you're underachieving today. You know, this is a process of seeking. of just trying to understand yourself. So just that you're in this conversation, trying to understand yourself is exactly where you should be. You know, as people in Western civilization, we want to get right to the achievement. We want to get, you know, right to God. I got it. That's my, that's my type and I'm good and I'm done. There are many people, experts who work in the Enneagram who don't believe in taking assessments. Just read through the material and you'll get a sense of who you are. That's a lot of homework for today. So we went with the assessment just to kind of break it down. So, and at the very least, you may know which type you're not. You may be like, that's so unrelatable. There may be other people that come to mind for you that you think may be that type that are, as I call, presenting as that type. You may not know they're that type, but I've got to tell you, like I've got a coworker, I am so clear he must be a six. And even if he may not be, if I hold that, it's like, now I understand why he's fear-based and I, and I accept it instead of trying to fight it. So does that make sense so far? Okay, an agreement that you'll jump in and participate so I don't feel all alone here in the room. That's good. I've seen your smiling faces. That's always wonderful too. And thank you for being on screen. All right, let me go to share screen. So welcome to your Enneagram morning. You just signed on for a great day. (laughs) So these are the nine numbers, the nine types. They're not in order of importance or greatness. They're just numbers. So what for those of you who might know your type or are close to it, if you could do what I did and go to changing your profile name and your little three dots and add your types, that would be great. So, okay, so let me, I'll just go a brief overview of the Enneagram. I should just qualify this. The Enneagrams, there's so many layers to it. So I'm giving you the foundation which is really a great foundation. And if you go no further than the foundation, you'll be golden. But there's so many ways to look at it. The diagram shows you how these types are connected to each other. We're not going to get to that as much today, but I may touch on it. The numbers are in a certain order around for reasons. So for instance, if you're a type, if Thomas is a type six, his wing will either be a five or a seven. Okay. And Bianca would be, If she's a three, her wing will be a two or four. So you start to take on some of those traits as well. The numbers are connected this way because that's where you also go in times of stress or health. So if you're a two, if you are in a time of stress, 
you may show up as an eight, which is a super strong person. I'll give you a story. I relate to the two. And when I was going through a divorce and, and finding a, a new job, I interviewed for a place that had me do the Enneagram. They're like, this is great. We completely need an eight on the team. I'm not an eight, but I was showing up as an eight because a two puts their feelings aside and they got business to do and they take care of things and they come back and visit their feelings later. Turns out I was really good for them as a two as well. But then a two will go to a four and integrate more of the four when they're in the healthier times. So I'm just explaining some of the ways it's a complex model. And as you work through it, you learn more and more layers about yourself. But at the, at the baseline, you're going to learn about your point of view. You look at the world through a lens that's unique to yourself and your type that others don't. Um, motivation, we talked about that. You're going to find out what your chief concerns are. So I mentioned that I work with a type six. I'll propose a new idea and he'll tell me all the problems with that idea. And if for two who's Missy happy and go lucky and like Missy sunshine, like, wait a minute, see the positive in this. But if he's a type six, which I do believe he may be, but I'm, you know, I can't type him. Um, I understand. And I can see the benefit of seeing someone who can see all the problems ahead of time. It's a great trait to have. And then you'll learn about your communication style too, and how others are different from you. So the nine point diagram is set up this way because you can also narrow down your type into three types. So the instinctive type is the type eight, nine, and one. The feeling type is two, three, and four. And then the thinking type is five, six, and seven. So this is how you, your decisions are informed. A type eight, nine, or one, they've got a strong intuition. <clears throat> the nine you showed actually denies their intuition. They don't even know how they feel. Feeling based is two, three, and four. And thinking based, your brain knows everything. They trust their brain more than anything. And that's the five, six, and seven. So that may help you narrow down what your type is and also understand other people's types. Show of hands if that helps you, if you can see where you land in that triad. You're not, Rosemary, tell us a little bit. It, it does, definitely. It's, it's weird because... I know Brian kind of said it sarcastically. I feel like I do have some six traits, but I'm going to actually double back and say I might be an eight. Okay. This is going to be exciting. I love this. I love the not knowing. It's the best. I'm actually into this. Good. <laughs> Good. It's going to get better. And I think that, uh, you know, and I use this phrase a lot, mm. is that I can get stuck in analysis paralysis. Because mm. I'm overthinking. Yes. Or, you know, because I am. I'm like, okay, that's a great idea. But what if? Yes. Or, you know, so let's, you know, plan for challenges and hurdles. So, and yeah. You can see things three, four steps down the line that no one else is seeing. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Who else? Someone else was saying something. Samantha. Oh, I was just going to say that it's super helpful because when I came up as a three, I was like, but I don't think I'm fully a three and so to see the lines intersect and to, mm -hmm. to look at it that way it, it's super helpful for me that's great and for those three sixes and nines take a look at these lines you have a special little thing going on here the three six and nine have a really they, they are really connected to each, each other so you can see how you'll show up as the different types in different circumstances yeah Brian, did you say, did you have something? I feel like I may have cut you off. No, you're good. Anyone else? I have a quick question. Yes, Bianca. This is Bianca. Yeah. So um, I've taken the Enneagram three times and every time I came out as a three or an eight. Ah, I, that makes complete sense to me. <laughs> Great. It makes complete <laughs> sense. And you may be like, wait, they're in different triads. So yeah, both... Uh, and and they, people get them confused all the time. They're both super driven people. They're really high achievers. And look at you, you're like you almost feel embarrassed by that because you've been probably told that you're too strong, you're too up, up front, right? And as women, you just I will tell you. Her to a T. Pardon me? You just identified her to a T with those words. There you go. <laughs> and so, and three women and eight women they suffer in life. People don't, they don't want them to be as strong, especially a female 
sports coach, professional sports coach that I'm working with is an executive coach and she's an eight and she's worked with me to develop empathy, but I want to make sure she never loses her eightness. So that's really good to know, Bianca, because they do show up the same in some ways, but when we get to the motivations that may help, a three will be more in tune with the room than an eight. An eight will simply expect people to rise to their level of performance. If you want to see a great example of an eight is watch the Michael Jordan documentary. It's phenomenal. He's a screaming eight and he's a high achiever and he expects everyone else to do what he does. And they, they, they do it. But a three will have a little more nurturing in that and they will read the room and be more conscientious in their communication or an eight's like, just follow me and do what I do. An eight will work alongside their team doing the hard work that their team is doing. A three will too, but they'll be a little more out front with a little more empathy. So that's one of the ways they'll show up differently. But the main thing is the motivation. So we'll talk about those. So those are your, those are your triads. So to break that down again, an eight is going to be very action oriented. A feeling or feeling oriented, of course, is that two, three, four, and then the thinking center. That action's huge. So another executive coach, I think I track the eights. I'm part New Yorker. I love New Yorkers because they're so eight. And here I am a two, I go to eight. I love eights. They don't do as well in Sonoma County. People don't understand the eights in Sonoma County as well as they do in New York. New York, like just hail a cab and you're up against a bunch of other eights to get that cab. And see, like right now, I'm just trying not to drop the F-bomb in this. That's an eight. So I worked, I worked with um, an, another aide, a financial advisor, and he had a lot of work to do. As an <laughs> like he'd get upset with a staff member. They'd show up to the office and they have all their stuff packed in at the elevator. They're out. Like that's an eight. They're instinctive, right? <laughs> and he saw no issue with that. What? He's right. That's it. So that's the instinctive center that helps you understand. If you also want to check out your type, think about how you write an email. A feeling center will most likely, well, what I feel is, well, I'm feeling this, you know, a type five is never going to lead with what I feel, like what I think is. So that's just watch your language and that may help you understand your type. 